Thank you for joining me with, with Time Out for Torah. My name is Rabbi Yosef Alt of Golf Manor Synagogue in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today, I would like to share with you an idea that relates to Kriya Shema. This is relevant to Parshas Ve'eschanon and Parshas Ekev, both of which contain the first and second Parsha of Shema. In the beginning of the first Parsha of Shema, we find the words Ve'ohavta as Hashem Elokecha b'chol levavacha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol me'odecha. The commandment to love Hashem your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, u'v'chol me'odecha. Now, which is explained to mean through our, from the Gemara, which Rashi quotes, b'chol me'moncha, with all of your money. In the second Parsha of Shema, the Torah repeats the words, "Bechol levavchem with all of your heart, uvechol nafshechem with all of your soul." However, it leaves out the words "bechol moadechem." So that begs the question: Why, in the first part of Shema, does the word "bechol moadecha" appear, but in the second part of Shema, "bechol moadechem" does not appear? The Nefesh Achayim, Rav Chaim Velazhner. He shares a fascinating idea. This can be found in Sha'ar Aleph of the Sefer Nefesh Achaim, Perk Ches. He references a Gemara in Brachos, a well-known Gemara, a fascinating dispute. The Gemara reads as follows, Tanu Rabbanon, ve'osafta digonecha. It says in the second parsha of Shema, you should gather in your grain. What is that coming to teach us? Because it has said elsewhere, This Sefer Torah should not leave your mouth. You might think to take that literally as it's written, that you should literally do nothing but study Torah, nothing else. Therefore the Torah teaches, No, you should gather in your grain. Hinog bohen minhag derech eretz. You should behave with them with derech eretz, with the, the way of the land, meaning to have a job as well, to work the land, etc. Divrei Rabbi Yishmo. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yishmo. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai Omer, Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, he argues with Rabbi Yishmo, and he says as follows Efshar Adam Choresh Bishas Harisha. Is it possible that a person should plow at the time of plowing, the zareya bishas zareya, and sow at the time of seeding, the kotzer bishas ketzira, harvest at the time of har- harvesting, the dosh bishas disha, thresh at the time of threshing, the zore bishas haruach, winnow at the time that the wind blows, Torah mate aleha. What will be with the Torah? If at all of those different stages of the agricultural cycle, he's busy taking care of the crop and doing everything that needs to be done to earn a living, when will he ever, ever study Torah? Ella, rather, says Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, b'zman shiso osin v'tonu shal malkom malach nasas al-idei When we, the Jewish people, are fulfilling the will of Hashem, then our work will be done by others. We won't have to work. We won't need any jobs. Shenemar the Amdu Zarim or Utsonachem. Strangers will come and they will shepherd your sheep. Continues Rabshim Barichai, Ubizman Shi Enusa Osim Ritsonushal Makum, and the time that the Jewish people are not doing the will of Hashem, Malach the Naz is the Atzman, then their work must be done by themselves. Shenemar, as it says, the Osafta Digonecha. You should gather in your grain. So therefore, Rabshin Bar Yochai says that really the ideal is that the Jewish people, when they are fulfilling the will of Hashem, do not need to work at all. They study Torah 24-7, and that's it. The verse in the second part of Shema that you gather in your grain is referring to a different time, when we're not fulfilling the will of Hashem, and we need to work for a living because others won't do it for us. Velo od el shemlech has a chayr nasis al yodon shnemar in the times that we're not doing Hashem's will, not only will we have to work for ourselves, we'll have to work for others as well. Okay, that is the dispute between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shmuel is of the opinion 
Torah goes together with work. You spend some time studying Torah, you spend some time earning a living, that's the way it's meant to be. Rabbi Shem Yochai says, no, it's supposed to be when you're doing the will of Hashem, then Torah, 24-7. And a livelihood, that'll come from others. Others will take care of that for you. When we're not doing the will of Hashem, then we don't have that blessing, and then we need to work for a living. But that's not the ideal. Amar Abaye, Abaye says, Harbe also Karebi Yishmoel, the also the other. Many did like Rebbe Yishmo. They had a blend of Torah and Parnassah. And the also be other, it came in their hands. They were successful with that model. Karebi Yishim and Bar Yuchai, many did like Rebbe Yishim and Bar Yuchai, the lo also be other. They were not successful. So seemingly Abaye is teaching us that the two opinions were put to the test, and Rabbi Shmuel's opinion was the one that was successful. Amar le Rava le Rabbana. Rava said to the Rabbana, which we will see is a, he's referring to his own students. When the month of the days of Nisan and the days of Tishrei roll around, I don't want to see you before me. Meaning, I don't want you to be coming to study in the base medrash during those months. In order that you should not be bothered, be troubled with earning a living for the rest of the year. Take those two months off. Rashi tells us those two months were the peak months in the agricultural cycle where they would be able to make the most uh, Parnassa make the most of a living during those two months. Dedicate those two months to making a living, and then the rest of the year, that's when I want to see you come back to the base medish and study Torah. That is the end of the Gemara. So here we have a machlokas between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. What is the ideal? Is the ideal to mix Torah study with also making time for making a living? That was Rabbi Shmuel, or is the ideal 24-7 Torah study, and Hashem will provide us with our livelihood from other means. The Nefesh Chaim has a discussion about some of the details of this Gemara, and he offers one particular detail which is relevant to our point of Kriyashma, of the Chomo Adecha, of the Chomo Adechem. The Gemara says, Om Rabbi Harbe also Rabbi Shemov also be other. Many did like Rabbi Shemov, and they were successful. They did, they did like Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, they were not successful. The simple explanation of that Gemara is that it was put to the test, and Rabbi Shmuel's position was the one that was successful. The Nefesh Chaim says no. The Gemara's language is har asu. Many did. The Gemara is being very precise with that language. And the Gemara means to say that for the masses, for, for the uh, institutionalizing uh, this process, Rabbi Shmuel's position is the one to be taken. That there, someone needs to blend making a living with Torah study. However, that's not to say that for individuals, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's position of 24-7 study Torah and total dedication and allowing Hashem to provide that livelihood from other means, that there, that is not to say that for the individuals, that that would not be the ideal. And therefore, he explains, that is why which means all of your money appears in the first part of Shana, but not in the second. Because if you look carefully in the Psukim, you'll notice the language of the first part of Shema is in the singular. Each of which, the singular. Your heart, your soul, your money. Singular. For the, for the individual, giving all of your money for Torah and for mitzvot, i.e. not to take any time to earn a living, is appropriate. But in the second parsha of Shema, v'chol levav chem, v'chol naf shechem, that is the plural. That's referring to the masses. That's the institutional level. There, writes Reb Chaim Velazhen, there, the Gemara tells us, Harba also Kirebi Yishmoel, the also Biyadan. When it's for the masses, it needs to be like Rebbe Yishmoel, and 
one is not the it's the ideal is not to give all of your livelihood away and focus entirely on Torah, but rather to take time to make a living, of course, balancing that with making time for studying Torah as well. That is the approach of the Nefesh Achayim. There are two other answers I want to share for this question about why in the first part of Shema the word B'chomo Adecha appears, but in the second part of Shema V'chomo Adechem does not appear. Um, first, I'll, I'll share with you an idea from Rabbi Moshe Heinemann, who is the Rav HaMachshah of the Star K in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. He is also the Rav of the Aguda Shul in Baltimore, Maryland, a tremendous, tremendous Talmud Chacham, a very close student of Rav Moshe Feinstein. And I had the privilege of hearing him speak on a number of occasions during my years in near Israel as a student of the yeshiva near Israel in Baltimore, where he would frequent uh, with shiurim on different occasions. And on one of those occasions, I heard him say a fascinating shot. If you look at Rashi, Rashi quotes the Gemara, which addresses a difficulty with the words. All of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your money. What is v'chol nafshecha, all of your soul? What does that mean? Rashi says, Afilu notel es nafshecha, quoting the Gemara in Brachos, even if it means giving up your life. We know there are certain mitzvot, the three cardinal sins, other certain scenarios in which a Jew is obligated to give up their life. That's what we mean v'chol nafshecha, all of your soul, even if it means giving up your life in those scenarios where that is what is called for. So the Gemara is bothered if we've already stated that our love from Hashem has to be to such an extent that we're willing to give up our lives, certainly it includes being willing to give up our money. So why does that need to be specified? So Rashi quotes what the Gemara answers, Because there are people whose money is more beloved to them than their goof, than their body, than their own life. The kafnem are adacha. Therefore, the Torah has to say, with all of your money, because even that fellow, where b'chol nafshecha, all of your soul, that's not as strong as all of his money. He needs to be told all of his money as well. Rabbi, Rabbi Heinemann suggested, again, focusing on the difference of the first part of Shema being individual with the Lashon Yachid, the individual language, whereas the second part of Shema is a Lashon Rabbim, it's the plural language. Rabbi Heinemann said, an individual, you can have a, a Meshuggah, you can have a crazy person who values his money more than his life. So therefore, the Torah has to tell us, But in the second part of Shema, where it's the plural, it's talking to everyone, the masses, there, you don't have to worry about someone being so crazy that they put their money before their own life. And therefore, the Torah didn't have to say it. That was his pshat. I'll show you one more pshat, which um, I heard from a number of different people, and I think it's a very, very true to the simple pshat of Shema, and that is the first, there's a significant difference between the first paragraph of Shema and the second paragraph of Shema. And if you look carefully, you'll notice this. It's actually printed in a number of sidurim. The art scroll sitter mentions this, and a number of sidurim as well, about what you're supposed to concentrate on as you recite each of the different paragraphs of Shema. The first paragraph of Shema is Kabbalah's O Malchus Shemaim, accepting the yoke of heaven. A general acceptance of our dedication to Hashem, our love for Hashem, etc. The second parish of Shema is a little bit more specific, focusing on old mitzvos, the yoke of mitzvos, keeping each of the individual mitzvos, and the concept of reward and punishment. And the second parish of Shema talks about having a good crop, having good things, if, you, if we obey the Torah and we follow Hashem's mitzvot, which is not mentioned in the first parsha. So therefore, there are those who want to suggest that when it comes to accepting the yoke of heaven, gen, the, the general concept of our dedication and of our love for Hashem, there's no, there is no bounds. Even when it comes to our wallet, to our bank account, we how we live our lives and how we spend our money, it has to be with that in mind, that focus on Hashem. 
the second Parsha of Shah, getting into the details of the mitzvos, that it's not so simple. It's not, you don't spend every single dollar necessarily. There are, there are different details and rules when it comes to mitzvos. Hefzid Meruba, there's a significant financial loss. Then, room to be lenient. A Hidur mitzvah, beautifying a mitzvah is ad shlish, you go up until a third. You do not go beyond a third in beautifying a mitzvah. Uh, giving charity, you're, you're not supposed to give more than a fifth of your total income towards charity. There are limitations in terms of how money is spent towards specific mitzvahs. And therefore, to say all of your money, that much the Torah would not say in the second parasha of Shema. Thank you for joining me with Time Out for Torah. I hope you uh, found this uh, insightful, these different ideas for why in the first parasha of Shema we find the word, but in the second parasha of Shema we do not find the words,